I prayed to God that he would let you marry me. And then I also prayed to God that he would help me get over you. Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll discuss women who make the decision to divorce a man, only to expect him to stick around and solve their problems while they explore relationships with other men. Before we begin, we want to thank you for being here. Your support means a lot to us. If you enjoy what you see, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. We'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow and reach more people. Thank you for being part of our project. Let's get started. So if you haven't heard, I'm going through a divorce. And divorce is a lot like death. I've, ex I've experienced a lot of that in my life. You have to grieve and you have to get some grasp on understanding. And on Monday, we will have been married 14 years. We will have been together in April for over 20. And as weird as this may sound, it's almost like I'm grieving and mourning the brother-sister aspect of our relationship or the friendship aspect more than the romantic aspect because if you know anything about Disney movies, Ohana means family, and family's forever. Especially the family you pick. If I run out of gas on the side of the interstate, and I call him, no matter how many times I call, no matter how sad I am, no matter how alone I am, he's not coming. And he's told me that, and he's shown me that. And I'm having the hardest time accepting that. He's not my family anymore. Where am I gonna be buried? Who's gonna bury me? That's the hard part. The unconditional love wasn't unconditional. And he doesn't wanna be my family. He doesn't care about me no matter how mad he gets at me or aggravated like he used to because it's not unconditional. That's the hardest part. Losing my family. Losing my friend. I don't need another slow kiss or a uh, love song dedicated to me. I need someone to show up with a gas can when I run out of gas. I miss having a best friend. You don't miss having a friend. You miss not having your puppet, the man who was supposed to solve your problems while all he did was wait, while he took care of everything, because you asked for divorce with the idea that everything would stay the same. But it's not like that. A self respecting man sets limits and, Above all, distance from the woman who left him. Because why would you keep a woman who told you she wants to leave around you? Why would you befriend that woman to keep doing her favors or helping her every time she has an emergency when it's not your responsibility? When she'll bring another man into intimacy, but only call you when she needs things done that Chad doesn't want to do. Listen well, man, if you got divorced, sign that separation paper. You are not responsible for that woman anymore. You don't have to fix her car or the house she took from you or anything to do with that woman. Because if she gave up your protection as a husband, just because she didn't want to take care of you, why on earth should you take care of her when she left you? Take away the privileges she had when she was your wife and let her crash into the wall. I'm divorced. Of course I gave up on my marriage out of nowhere and he was totally shocked when I finally said I wanted a divorce. I'm divorced. Of course I'm a gold digger and now I'm living my life carefree. <laughs> I'm divorced. Of course I'm damaged goods and a red flag. Run, boys. I'm divorced. Of course I didn't try counseling before filing for divorce. 
I'm divorced. Of course I'm the villain because I chose to end it, even though they would have stayed in a miserable marriage for 10, 20, 30 years. <laughs> I'm divorced. Of course it's because I don't understand the true meaning of commitment these days anymore. Ah, chivalry is dead. I'm divorced. Of course I'm going to brag about it on the internet like it's a flex. I'm divorced. Obviously, I stopped drinking, stopped binge eating, and started working out every day and had a total glow up. I'm divorced and I post about it on the internet, so I should just be okay with all the bullying that I receive for being divorced. And she's clearly divorced. We know she's hit the wall. She's divorced and we already know you're not wife material. She's divorced and you use your story to continue ruining marriages. She's divorced. Now she wants another beta provider to keep increasing her wealth through divorce. The ironic thing is that she, she made a video crying about her separation, lives making videos to incite more women to leave their marriages. What does that tell us? That she can't get over her ex-husband. When you see a woman constantly criticizing her ex-husband, using some event from her life to profit, it's because she can't forget that man, she lives bitter. She may say she deserves all that hate, but how many women do we see complaining about the wall? We know better than anyone that they've hit the wall, they can't escape their reality because the wall doesn't forgive. If she's a gold digger, why does she brag about how she got money from her ex-husband? That's why men, never, and I mean never, marry without a prenup. If you can avoid getting married, even better. I've never made a video talking about why I wanted divorce, so I guess let's dive into it. Cause on my get ready with me video that's got millions of views, a lot of people are like, step one for weight loss, divorce him. And no, no, that's not like what my intentions were with that video. That's just sadly part of my story. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Lauren. I'm a weight loss influencer and I lost 87 pounds and also happened to get divorced. So let's go way back to the beginning. I met my ex-husband in college my first semester in 2014. We got married May 1st of 2017. We were in college at Missouri State at the time and he just like grabbed my promise ring and asked me to marry him. And then a week later told me he wanted to join the army, so which we had been dating for three years. I loved him. He was like the love of my life. So I said, yes, like love is all we need, right? So I dropped out of college. I got my associates in general studies, but like never finished my bachelor's at Missouri State and went on to become an army wife and got it in my head that I needed a baby instantly since I was leaving my family to go move like somewhere in the country, which what was wrong with me? I was 21 years old and like demanding a baby. Anyway, son was born in March of 2018, and by March of 2020, I wanted a divorce. Our marriage just started feeling like we were roommates, like we literally didn't have any intimacy. We didn't seem to have much in common anymore, like we didn't even like listening to the same music. We didn't have fun together anymore. He had his own struggles with mental health during our whole relationship, and I, like, it started to rub off on me, which sounds so bad, but I tried to take care of his needs for so long. Like, I would literally wrap this man up in blankets and give him baths and wash his whole body and, like, hold him tight in Walmart. Like, I did a lot of things for him. And then when I was struggling, where was he for me? I loved this man. I was literally obsessed with him. Letting our relationship get to like that roommate level is what really well, what really ruined it. And I tried telling him. He'd come home from work and just instantly sit in his recliner and be on his phone. And I said, hey, like, I need attention. I'm starting to be unhappy. Oh, okay. Weeks go. This story can be seen in two ways. First, she got married young. And one thing a young woman doesn't do is endure a bad moment in the relationship. This man, being a military man, surely was under a lot of stress. As she says, he began to have mental health problems. Something a woman doesn't like to do is take care of a man. Here begins the woman's hypergamy. The woman is always evaluating her relationship with that of other women. The moment the woman sees that she is with a low-value man, whom she does not admire, she will clearly discard him. And I don't blame her because if she's with a man who becomes a total mess, she has the option to leave, she'll go away. But if this had been the woman who had the same problem, this man would leave her this man would be strongly criticized for leaving her. Just look, she says, I was getting infected by it. In short, you are no longer a man who contributes anything to me. As we all know, only animals, women, and children receive unconditional love and care. Men are not on that list. A man only has value if he is loved for what he can bring to the table. They only gave him three years of marriage because she knew that at 21 years old, she had to quickly take advantage of leaving him to find another beta provider to take care of Chad's child. But let's continue with the story. 
go by nothing really changes so I'm like hey um, I'm starting to like think about life without you like it's getting worse I need attention like let's do something fun together still like nothing hey I'm starting to imagine what life would be like with another man like I'm falling out of love with you we need to fix this still nothing or he would like do better for a week and then just go back to being lazy all the time around the same time too is when I started wanting to do better for myself and lose weight and find myself again and I felt like his he just has a very like low vibration personality and gets stressed out really easily and I felt like every single day like his negativity was bringing me down when I was trying so hard to like find my happiness again like I'd wake up ready to have a good day and his attitude instantly just like ruined it for me and like back to the whole intimacy thing I tried telling him like hey I googled it I said we need to start planning this because apparently like the less you do it the less you want it the more you do it the more you want it so let's schedule it he came home from work one day and I said hey can we do it later like let's let's plan to do it oh sure maybe well after dinner he's using the bathroom and I'm folding laundry at the kitchen table and I got a book idea so I bust into the bathroom because we're comfortable with each other like that to tell him my book idea only to find him like this <laughs> broke my heart. I cried so much. There were so many times I would just lay in our bed alone crying, feeling so unwanted, so unloved, just wanting to be touched, wanting to be wanted. Our relationship had other problems too and of course I had my own like toxic energy I brought to the relationship but I'm the one who asked for a divorce and like that is why I wanted it for the most part. Like I was tired of my feelings being hurt, tired of the grumpy attitude every like all the time, tired of the laziness, like not helping me do anything around the house, which I'm a stay at home wife or I was a stay at home mom. But if I need help cleaning out a room upstairs, don't say like next weekend, then that weekend comes next weekend, then that weekend comes no next weekend. Like, no, help a bitch out. Like, come on. My ex is a good man, and I hope he finds a woman that is on the same vibration as him, and I will welcome her into my heart with loving arms. I want my child to have a good stepmom. I want to have a good relationship with her, and I have a great relationship with my ex-husband. Okay, I say great. It's more so like brother and sister that like love-hate relationship. Like we fight a lot, but if one of us ever needed something, like we know we could call each other. I'll be clear about this. I don't blame this woman for wanting to leave this man, because let's be honest. Nobody wants to be married to a disaster. I want you to take this as a wake-up call, men. Never lose your life's path, especially when you're in a relationship. No matter how much a woman says she likes attention, she really loves a man who knows what he wants, a man with ambition who takes care of himself. That's why you always have to prioritize yourself, because that's what makes those around you, whether it's friends, family, or your wife, want to fit into your frame or lifestyle. I always say, women marry for a lifestyle. That man was a mess, probably addicted to adult content, probably doing poorly at work, stressed out, no longer touching her. In short, he lived in a cloud of negativity, and whether it's a woman or a man, nobody wants to be with someone like that. That's why exercising, working, developing social skills, taking care of your mind and body, reading, dressing well, will always make your life in every aspect great. That's why I say the red pill saves lives. If that man always prioritized himself, as a man should, this woman would still be by his side, because nobody leaves what is good. I literally just got divorced. <laughs> I'm done. I don't ever have to see him again. That was so hard. That was so painful. <sighs> I couldn't look at him. I couldn't say hi. I couldn't say bye. I just walked away. I love most in this entire world, you know? That was it. That's how the story ends. I loved him with everything that I was. And now it's done. Oh, come on, I'm fucking broken, man. I fucking hurt. I kept it together until the end. But I did that shit. I did that alone. I got divorced alone. I did it myself. I did all the work. I did all the research. Oh, I can't stop crying. Oh my god. <laughs> I did all the research. I did all the work. I did all the paperwork. I did all the legal documents. I fucking did it. 
he was there um, when I arrived. Like, he was there early. And so I had to, like, walk up to him. And he said hi, and just in the, like, most shameful tone. I was shaking for a while. And then eventually, like, calmed down. And I calmed down because he was the person that I felt safest with. I don't know, my brain. I guess that was, like, my coping mechanism. I don't know. But I stopped shaking. And then um, we signed all the paperwork and went in. And it was relatively fast. I mean, there were a few things that we were missing, like, name and address for. So we filled that out together. We, like, stepped aside and filled it out together. And then we went back to the window and gave them all the documents. That are... There's an ambulance. And I just, I stayed strong. I stayed strong the entire time. sit at the beach and um, take a few deep breaths. That was so hard and sad. If he was your best friend, the person you love the most, you wouldn't abandon him. What bothers me is that she portrays herself as a victim. When you hear a woman's divorce story, there's always background music and the sad tale of the damsel in distress who escaped from the cave of the big bad wolf. Just say, I got divorced because I want to try with someone else. This woman said something that leaves us evidence. I did all the work, the research. What does that tell us? That she searched for all the evidence, consulted with a lawyer, and when she had everything to screw the man over, she filed for divorce. That's what she prepared for, the way to get the most benefit after the divorce. This is why men don't get married anymore. You can't enter a lifelong business where your partner receives more benefits for leaving the business than staying with you. That woman was my friend, the man I love the most, my safe place. If you do this to the person you love the most, may God spare me from being your enemy. Don't be fooled by tears because she can look at you crying while still stabbing you in the back. As we all know, women are always the victims. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think of the woman who left the man who was a military man? Do you think that woman deserves all the hate that men throw at her in the comments? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.